Aloha Kako. Welcome again, evening, everyone. Uh, my name is James Eustace. And I'm the president of the Waimea Community Association. Uh, thank you to those joining us online tonight for our regular monthly WCA town meeting. I always encourage you to follow, like, and subscribe to the Waimea Community Association on our social accounts. Uh, you may also find relevant information and resources up on our website at waimeatown.org. Uh, we do strive to keep our accounts active and up to date. Uh, this evening, we are streaming both to YouTube and Facebook. And of course, this recording will be made available uh, for later viewing. At this point, I'd like to recognize my fellow WCA board members, our Vice President, Mary Beth Lechek, our Treasurer, Jeremy Madrid, our Secretary, Nancy Carr-Smith, and our fellow board members, Patty Cook, Michael Donnelly, David Greenwell, Lonnie Olson Chong, and Riley Smith. And on behalf of the Waimea Community Association Board, uh, we are grateful for support shown by you, the community to hold these town meetings. Thank you all for your interest in joining us for our past meetings and for viewing and sharing these recordings. Uh, the Waimea Community Association is a nonprofit organization that strives to promote open participation by all of the Waimea community, develop leadership, and support the smart growth of the region. If you'd like to support the work uh, that we have done and help continue our effort in connecting with our community, uh, you are more than welcome to donate and join as a member. Please visit our website, waimeatown.org, or send us an email at waimeacommunityassociation at gmail.com for more information. Your contributions and your membership allow us to reach out and connect with the community in this setting and support the smart growth uh, and the work that WC has done over the past 60 years. Mahalo nui. Uh, this evening, we have a wide range of topics that we plan to cover. Uh, and we'll begin with a number of community updates, learn about the dangers of fentanyl, and take a moment to spotlight our nonprofit of the month. Uh, then we'll spend the last portion of tonight's meeting getting up to speed and learning more about the ongoing efforts with our County of Hawaii Mass Transit Agency. Uh, we have allocated time to share your questions with our presenters tonight, and we appreciate community members sending in questions ahead of time, as always, but we will also try and capture some of your live questions. Uh, please use the live chat to pose your questions, and we will do our best to share them with our guests here. Uh, thank you to my fellow board members for joining me on the call this evening to share and present those questions. So to start things off, I'd like to welcome back our County Council member representing uh, Council District 1, Heather Kimball, to share with us a few updates. Welcome, Councillor, and thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you, James, and, and the rest of the Waimea Community Association Board for the invitation. It's so nice to be back and to see all of you again. Um, I'll just by, start by saying you know, I'm just really excited and honored and grateful to, to have been reelected to serve uh, an additional term as District 1 representative. And I'm also very excited to welcome the new council members who've been elected, uh, Cindy Evans and Michelle Galimba. Cindy, of course, will be representing the other half of Waimea, and she and I have already been meeting together and talking about the many issues that, that we'll have to work on um, together as we move forward. So really looking forward to um, the collaboration that, that she and I will have coming forward. Um, since it's a bit a while, I have quite a few item update on, and I'm just going to be brief about all of them. Um, so a few legislative items. Uh, first, the council just approved Bill 195. Um, on Wednesday, which is a rewrite of the Civil Defense Code. It actually puts our emergency management processes in alignment with the state um, Hawaii revised statutes. It's something that's very much long overdue. Um, it, it makes the whole process of civil defense much more robust. And I'm really pleased to see, say that I think that the council developed an, an excellent bill um, through the process. In addition to the civil defense bill, we also passed an abandoned vehicles bill. Um, this will allow the county to actually fund um, the towing from private property of abandoned vehicles so that they can be disposed of. The county has um, always provided residents with the opportunity to dis to do the disposal of the vehicle. We covered that cost, but we didn't cover the cost of towing it to the disposal site. So this bill allows us to provide that service to the community, which I know is a huge concern across the island um, in terms of just public health and safety, but also the, the beauty of our island. So um, that, that passed in the, uh, as well on Wednesday, and we're excited to see that um, to be put in place by the Department of Environmental Management. Um, we had a conversation on Tuesday about animal control. It's been a little bit over a year now since um, 
the Hawaii County Police Department took over responsibility for um, animal control services. And um, the community was reaching out to me, many of them in Waimea area, um, just concerned about how things were going and wanting to have an update, um, particularly with the, the shelter there in Waimea. Um, so unfortunately, um, although it was scheduled to be heard in committee uh, this Tuesday, um, the, the um, police department was not quite ready to give their presentation because they um, had some things in the works that they wanted to be able to provide an update on. Um, so that has been rescheduled to the 18th, although we did hear a significant amount of testimony um, with respect to this issue. So if you'd like to testify or, or listen in, um, again, that will be on October 18th in the um, Public Health and Safety Committee. Um, another matter that we took up this week in committee was a bill that Council Member Chung introduced with respect to concealed carry and sensitive places. This has to do with the Supreme Court decision that determined um, that the New York law around um, concealed uh, carry permits was in violation of the Second Amendment. And what that did was that it, it put the concealed carry policies in our state also um, made them un unconstitutional. And so what has now had to happen is that the counties do have to offer permits for concealed carry. Um, however, the this decision by the Supreme Court did allow um, municipalities to make a determination if there were sensitive places. And the, the, the determination by the Supreme Court specifically identified schools and government facilities as places that could be deemed sensitive. Um, but there are other mechanisms within the, the um, ruling that allow us to, to determine other sensitive places. And we had a robust discussion. The, the bill is still in committee and um, we'll probably have a couple of more iterations to really get the definitions right so that we are in alignment with the constitution, but also um, identifying these places where um, we don't want concealed weapons to be allowed. Um, the other thing that came up in our most recent meeting was a resolution with regard to the, the location of the Hilo jail. And this was in part in response to a recent report that indicated that the jail in Hilo was the worst in the country. Um, it's extremely overcrowded. And I, I see Judge Hasegawa nodding here. She, she knows the issues we have there. The resolution is largely symbolic um, because it's, it's the state's uh, jurisdiction um, to, to deal with HCC, but all of the entire body um, unanimously supported this um, mechanism of speaking to the state and saying, hey, you need to do something about this facility and the overcrowding there. So that passed um, committee as well. And I'm, I'm out of time, but uh, I would like to just um, mention real briefly that um, we do have repaving. The state is going to repave Highway 19 um, from Lakeland coming in towards uh, Waipia, or, um, Waimea. It's scheduled for early 2023. And I know that's been a concern of, of um, area residents for a long time, but expect that coming soon. We're very excited that that's moving forward. Thank you, James. Appreciate the time. <laughs> thank you, Councillor. I know it's short, goes by fast, uh, but thank you for touching on those topics. Um, those are very much concern of the community. So thank you for, for sharing those. Appreciate the work you're doing for us. Thank you. All right, so uh, this evening for our community health update, uh, we will focus on the drug fentanyl and the extreme danger it poses on our island community, uh, communities and for our keiki as well. So this evening, we're grateful to be joined by Dr. Kimo Alameda, representing both Hawaii Island Community Health Center and as the lead of the Hawaii, Hawaii County Fentanyl Task Force. Dr. Alameda aims to provide us some insight into this growing risk. Welcome, doctor. Welcome. Thanks, James, and aloha, everybody. Um, I got 10 minutes, so James is going to give me the peace sign when I'm down to two minutes. All right. Hey, uh, aloha, everybody. So this is a, a critical issue right now on our island. Um, you know, I have a presentation that's going island-wide. It's, it's called Be Kind to Your Mind, uh, Choose Not to Use, um, because, you know, we're trying to get to the, to the youth. So um, let me just share with you some thoughts here. Uh, fentanyl right now is a leading cause of death for Americans 18 to 45. Um, and it's mostly coming in the pill form. Um, and as you can see, look, just what a very tiny speck, two milligrams on that pencil tip, you know, is enough to be a lethal dose. Um, so we're very concerned. Um, 
it, it, you know, the West Hawaii asked me uh, about three weeks ago, they said, hey, hey Kimo, um, how about rainbow fentanyl? Is it here yet? I was like, what's that rainbow fentanyl? You know, so, I mean, these, these, uh, these drug marketers are, are basically kind of ahead of the game. So I Googled it. I said, well, it just was in the States two weeks ago. So I'm, I'm guessing it's just a matter of time. Hey, two days later, I got a call from uh, uh, Officer Chopin out in um, Wyoming outside. And he says, you know what? It's here. We had a big drug bus. And, you know, so so we got rainbow fentanyl here. And it's, and it's a marketing strategy. Um, and, you know, they kind of using the marketing strategies from the, the, the vaping. Uh, you know, flavored vape and all, and they're targeting our kids now. So this is a, a, a big issue. Um, and that's why we're really kind of binding together as an island wide task force to, to fix this. So just some information. Fentanyl is, is a white powder. It can kill with ingestion. Just two milligrams, like I said, more deadly than cyanide, 100 times more powerful than morphine, 50 times more powerful than heroin. Again, the comparison with how much can cure you and the penny, very bad. So, you know, I had to update my slide uh, two days ago uh, because it was one person every 13 days, but now it's one person every 11 days uh, on this island. So this is this is hot off the press. I mean, so, you know, uh, and, it, and it took our own, uh, Colt Brennan, I mean, this drug has taken Michael Jackson, Prince, I mean, you know, but m mostly our own uh, islanders. Um, so what is opioids? It's basically a painkiller, you know, and it comes from the opium plant, um, but you can make pills from it in the, in the laboratory, um, and that's where they get hydrocodone, oxycodone, the Vicodins, you know, or you can 100% make it in the lab, and that's where fentanyl is made, and it's made in China, made in Mexico, um, but you can order it from the internet, so that's the problem right now. Um, they had a big drug bus here in Hilo. Somebody ordered a whole bunch of pills and some fentanyl from the internet. The post office got the dogs. They sniffed it out. Cops went down there, put a bug on it, followed it to the home, and, and they had a bus. Now, that, those, uh, that bus was big, something like 2,000 pills. 62% of, of, of those pills uh, had enough um, fentanyl in it to, to kill somebody. So thank goodness we got that off the streets. Um, so, you know, medically, it looks like that. It's a it's a patch, okay. Um, but how it's sold on the streets, it's, it looks like that. It's in pressed pills, but it also it's also in cocaine. It's in it's in meth. It's in heroin, uh, and the drug dealers are sneaking it in there because it it it's, it makes the high just unbelievable. And then the word gets out, and everybody said you should get your meth from that person, or you should get your coke from that person. Um, and and on the streets, you know, they're playing with Russian roulette. So the folks who are really dying from it are those who are probably already addicted to a drug, probably meth, cocaine, heroin, and and the, or pills, pain pills that they're getting it not prescribed. Um, and that's that's how they're dying. But you know, our kids are also uh, could our kids could take a pain pill, and that's why I'm I'm, I'm doing this I'm doing this island wide. I'm hitting the athletes. I'm hitting all the schools. Whoever's willing to let me come in, I'm I'm coming in. Um, because we want them to know if it's not prescribed, don't take it. So I asked the cops, hey, how much did we seize on the island? They said, hey, in the past two, three years, 53 pounds in the state is what we seized. But 30 pounds came from this island, big island. That's a lot. Now, if you do the math, two milligrams, I mean, you know, 30 pounds, that could kill all of us statewide five times. That's how bad it is. So what do we do then? How do we stop this trend? Well, we got the cops and the F FBI and the, you know, the feds doing a pretty good job on decreasing the supply, right? Business, supply, demand. We got to decrease the demand by getting it, getting the word out through education and prevention. And it's not enough to tell our kids, just say no. You know, I grew up Nancy Reagan. She said, just say no. It didn't work. Okay, so, so we got we to gotta replace the word no with the word K-N-O-W. We got to give kids and, and people and parents and teachers knowledge because knowledge is power. And with youth, knowledge is a superpower. So, so what we're doing is we're telling folks, hey, nobody goes from chocolate candy to fentanyl. There is a gateway. So this is my opportunity to get into the schools and get into the communities and get to parents and teachers and say, hey, you remember these, these gateway drugs when we were growing up? It's still gateway drugs. So we got to be careful because there's something in alcohol. There's something in nicotine. There's something in, in, in vaping that mimics what we already have in our brain. And that's why it's addictive. And so the hook is this relaxation. But we, we, can, we can relax if we meditate, we pray, we, we play music. We can get our reward system met through uh, natural experiences. Um, 
we don't have to get it through drugs and and that's my take-home message so when i'm at the schools i'm talking about vaping because that's the biggest issue and i tell kids look at what you're putting in your mouth oh my goodness you got formaldehyde in there you got antifreeze in there you got lead you got i mean nickel it's 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 terrible so hopefully the kids will start to realize like man i don't need that and they don't need that same thing with marijuana you know it's it's you know medical marijuana fine if it's prescribed by a doctor great but recreational use don't do it uh, and, and we're telling the youth don't do it and i tell you why this is this is the, the big deal here the, the first message is if you haven't start don't start because one gateway drug we don't want it to lead to cocaine meth heroin because that's where fentanyl is laced so choose not to use is the message and why because your brain's not fully developed into age 25. i mean look at that five years old the blue indicates areas of the brain that has been fully developed and the green indicates it's not fully developed so at 20 years old there's still some green spots so addiction is really a pediatric disease you know it's it's, it's really a pediatric disease so um that's why we don't want them to start so hey we're saying to kids we're not telling you no not to experiment with alcohol, you know, because cough medicine is alcohol. My mom used to make an awesome rum cake. What we're saying is don't go from I like it to I want it to I need it because I need it is the addiction. And that's what ne folks need to realize. Hey, we can like something, a couple beers here, cigarettes there, you know, but if you go to I want it and then you jump to I need it, now you're stuck because once you're stuck, your brain's going to shut down. It's going to it's not going to produce those natural chemicals anymore. And you're going to want to and you're going to have to get it from the outside and that's called craving that's why we tell folks hey the longer you put off these gateway drugs the better look if you, if you take a gateway drug before 15 your chances of addiction is 30 percent but if you wait to 21 your chances of addiction is under five percent and if you wait to 25 to try these these gateway drugs then your chances of addiction is almost nothing so we're not telling you no is my new message to my i got seven kids so i practice on them we're not telling you no we're telling you wait till you're 25 because at 25 you probably have a job they do drug testing you're not going to get those peer pressures from your peers you know it's going to be all it's going to be better so so the second message is hey after you're fully informed if you want to use it wait till you age 25 and then and then we go into because the gate if the gates are open we don't want our kids to start using uppers which is the cocaine the meth the, even adderall is an upper um and there's fake adderall out there so we're trying to get the kids to like, hey, hold off on those gateway drugs, right? I mean, I, I, you know, kid, uh, by high school, by senior year, all kids have already prob tried alcohol. So, so, but, but don't go from, you gotta, so we always say, you gotta check yourself. Don't go from, I, I like it, you know, to I want it, cause if, you know, cause then you might go to, I need it. So then we talk about math. You know, I saw some pictures. I want them to know what it looks like. So, hey, if, if you're at a party and you see somebody lighting a spoon, that's a drug walk the other way if you see a razor blade and some powder that's this that's a bad drug walk the other way you know and then i talk about uh, others you know hallucinogens inhalants and again just so happened like i showed my own kids i said I, you know i have one kid that's vaping and he, he quit and you know he had some withdrawals because that's how you know it was it was tough for him um but then he got other rewards natural rewards you know to help him get stimulate that reward system you know when you get a good laugh that's like a hundred yard sprint you know so we can get these rewards we just got to let the brain work it um and so i got one minute left so you know like lettuce nobody's going to get addicted to lettuce you can eat all the lettuce you like nobody's going to get addicted to gatorade there's some things out there you just can't get addicted to but just so happen these drugs you can so what we tell kids is hey you can get dopamine you know your dopamine fix by exercising music setting goals meditation talking stories but even smartphones social media netflix those are all addictive too kind of i put that in there so you got to check yourself i like it i want it i need it where are you right and then again the five take-home messages hey if you choose to use wait till you're 25 adopt a lifestyle that triggers dopamine naturally learn about these addictive sub substances if you're in i need it get help early treatment works i show a photo of a, of a of a patient who was in you know 12 years stuck on meth did great looks beautiful now get up like amazing success story so it is possible hold on pain ends is my definition of hope don't be don't have fear don't forget everything around instead face everything and recover and so lastly let me just end with this we are going around training on narcan 
if you guys know of somebody who wants to get training in it, it's real simple. Peel, place, and press. It's a nasal spray. It's basically harmless. I'm trying to get it into the schools. I'm trying to get it everywhere. Um, because if somebody's passed out, they could be passed out from oversleeping, being drunk. It doesn't matter. It doesn't hurt to just spray them in their nose. Wait two minutes. If they don't, they don't get up, spray them the second dose. I got those boxes, and, and I want to give training to give it out. You could even get it from free on that on that website there. So, hey, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you for your time. Be kind to your mind. And, you know, there's always help out there. And, and if you need this, we want this PowerPoint, I'll send it to James. He'll send it to you folks. Have a great day. Aloha. Aloha. Thanks, Dr. Kimo. You bet. Thank you. Thank you for leading the effort here on Hawaii Island. Um, opportunities like this give our community members information necessary to recognize these dangers. So thank you so much. Uh, we do look forward to the progress made by you and your colleagues on this front. So all the best to you. Thank you for your leadership. Wow, uh, amazing and uh, intense. So <laughs> thank you so much, Dr. Kimo. Uh, next up, I'm going to pass on the mic over to one of my fellow board members, uh, Nancy Carr Smith. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, to introduce our next guest. So the floor is yours, Nancy. So please take it away. Okay. Thank you, James. It's my honor to introduce Jill M. Hasegawa. And she was appointed by Chief Justice Mark Rectonwell to serve as judge of the District Family Court of the Third Circuit, which is the island of Hawaii, earlier this year. She currently presides over the districts of Hamakua, South Kohala, and North Kohala. Prior to her appointment, Judge Hasegawa served as a per diem district family court judge in the Third Circuit and worked at the law firm of Raymond Hasegawa in Hilo. Prior to that, she practiced with the law firm of Ashford and Riston in Honolulu. Judge Hasegawa was a member of the American Bar and Hawaii State Bar Associations. She's also past president of the Hawaii State Bar Association Young Lawyers. Judge Hasegawa served as president of the Hawaii Women's Legal Foundation and continues to sit on their board of directors. She also served on the board of directors for the Hawaii Women Lawyers. She's very supportive of and involved in her alma mater. She's the past president of the University of Hawaii Alumni and received an outstanding alumni award. Judge Hasiga was very active in her local community as well, and she currently serves as a volunteer attorney with Volunteer Legal Services Hawaii. She's a volunteer arbitrator. And last year, Judge Hasigawa joined the board of directors for Kuikahi Mediation Center in Hilo is wonderful. Um, Judge Hasegawa has been recognized by Pacific Business News as one of Hawaii's 40 under 40 top business and community leaders. She was honored by the Hawaii State Bar Association of Young Lawyers Division with its Justice Award in recognition of her outstanding contribution to the ideals of justice. She was also honored by the American Bar Association's Young Lawyers Division with the Star of the Year Award. And last, she was honored by, um, with an outstanding pro bono service award by the Domestic Violence Action Center. Uh, mind you, I did severe editing on her resume. These are a fraction <laughs> of the things that she has done and been acknowledged for. Uh, we're very fortunate to have um, Judge Hasigo in our community. Uh, please help me in welcoming her to Waimea and Judge Hasegawa, please tell us a bit about yourself and what your plans are for your new position. Well, um, thank you very much for that introduction, Nancy. First of all, thank you for the invitation to participate um, in today's uh, Waimea Community Association um, meeting um, and allowing me the opportunity to introduce myself. Um, as Nancy alluded to, I am a Big Island girl. I was born and raised in Hilo. Um, I'm a proud graduate of Hilo High School. Um, my family still resides on uh, the island and it's one of the reasons that I moved back to Hawaii. I practice uh, for, on Oahu with the law firm of Ashford and Riston for about 14 years. And I served as a, I was a partner for about seven of those years. Um, and then I moved back to the island of Hawaii in 2017. 
um, in part to help take care of uh, my grandmother who just turned 100 uh, back in January and she's doing very well. Um, and um, I was appointed by Chief Justice Rechtenwald in July of this year, um, to, or I, I was appointed back, I believe, in May, but I was sworn in, in on July 1st uh, to be the judge assigned to the Waimea South Kohala Courthouse. Uh, the South Kohala Courthouse had been closed for about two years or so during the pandemic uh, due to um, logistic reasons. For those of you who've ever visited the courthouse, it is a smaller courthouse. It's a community courthouse. Uh, we really weren't able to do a lot of the social distancing that needed to be done during the pandemic. Also, we had some staffing shortages. Um, but we reopened in approximately February of this year for our TRO calendar, our uh, domestic violence um, restraining order calendar. And then we fully reopened um, and we're having uh, hearings and in, in cases Monday through Friday, uh, starting July 1st of this year. Um, the Waimea South Kohala Courthouse is truly a community courthouse. It's uh, one of the uh, few in the state that is a standalone courthouse that basically serves the needs of the community. Uh, we are handle both district and family court matters. So everything from traffic and criminal matters um, to all of the family court matters, whether it's family court criminal, divorces, paternities, the CPS, the child protective calendar. Um, and, and so we handle all of, of those proceedings. And it really is one court, one judge, one community. Um, and I am very, very proud and honored to serve this community. My family is actually my mother's side of the family. My grandfather was born in. Um, Pauhau, and he grew up on a plantation. So this is a little bit like coming home for me. Um, and I am, again, so honored to be a part of the community. And I look forward to meeting many of you in person. Um, and if there's ever anything I can do to um, be of assistance, please do not hesitate to reach out. Thank you, Judge Hasegawa. It's great to have you on the call here and great to meet you. And we do look forward to seeing you in person out, out in the community. So thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate your leadership and your commitment to our community. Um, thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you, Nancy, for that nice introduction. And great to have Judge Hasegawa join us here and be a part of the community. Uh, so with the general election uh, fast approaching, uh, we felt it well, once again important to revisit the topic of voting. Uh, we are grateful to be joined by Rosemary Muller, who is the Vice President of the Hawaii State Legal and Voters and a Director of the Hawaii County Legal and Voters to share with us important information about the voting process over the next month. Welcome, Rosemary. Thanks for joining us once again. Thank you very much. And um, also thank you for inviting us to talk about some general election information. I do have some slides if you wanted to part to share the slides. Um, you can just go to the, the next slide because Okay, first of all, you should actually confirm your voter registration. It's really key that your voter registration remains current. Um, otherwise, you won't be receiving a ballot in the mail. And you can go online on olvr.hawaii.gov to check that. And you can also go on there to actually register online if you have a state ID. Um, Another way to, um, to do it, you can actually mail or hand deliver a voter registration application at the Office of Elections in either Hilo or Kona. And um, the League of Women Voters in, with the Office of Elections is going to have a wiki wiki voter registration on October 28th and on October 31st, Halloween. Um, from 9 a.m. to 4.30, we're going to have it in three different sites at Hilo at the Civic Center, um, at Kona at the Alanoha Center and at Pahoa at the Punakai Center. Um, of course, you can also um, register and vote in person on election day. Okay. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, different ways to vote. Of course, you can vote in person. Um, 
8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. on election day from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the two locations in West Hawaii Civic Center in Kona and at the County Center in Hilo. And of course, by mail, your ballot has to be received by 7 p.m. on election day. So you need to mail early or use the drop boxes. There's nine different locations for drop boxes. Um, okay. um, we actually have all those locations on our website also, if you need to um, look them up. Next slide, please, James. Um, you also make sure that you fill out both sides of your ballot in either black or blue pen. Um, there's a secrecy envelope. You need to place that into the return envelope. You need to sign the return envelope. Make sure you mail early and place in the drop box. You should also try to review a sample of your general election uh, ballot. And you can actually go on the Office of Elections website or you can actually go on vote411.org. I also wanted to also tell you that there will also be three proposals from the Charter Commission on your general election ballot. I'm just gonna to read to you the questions. We have not had time to actually do any of the pros and cons, the arguments in favor or the fiscal impacts. And when we do get them done, I can actually send them to you, James, and you can share them with your members. Um, but the first one is a proposal number one is membership for the Board of Ethics. Shall the Hawaii County Charter be amended to increase the membership of the Board of Ethics from five members to seven members? And proposal number two is expanding the duties of the county auditor. Shall the Hawaii County Charter be amended to expand the duties of the office of the county auditor to include investigating allegations of fraud, waste, or abuse within the operations of the county of Hawaii? And the third one is establishing a youth commission. Shall the Hawaii County Charter be amended to establish a youth commission, which would consist of at least nine, but no more than 15 members between the ages of 14 and 24 years old, whose duties would include advising the mayor, the county council, and official agencies of the county on legislative and budgetary matters, access existing programs, and advance new programs that support youth development and encourage and coordinate youth participation in the county initiatives and other forms of civic engagement. And of course, a yes vote means that you're in a favor and a no vote will mean that you're against the amendment. Okay. Our next slide, please, or just, we just have some dates. On October 21st, you should be receiving your general election ballot. I know for the, um, primary, we did get them a few days before that, so just check your mail for that. October 31st is your deadline to receive the mail, receive the ballot by mail, so you have to actually make sure you're registered to vote by October 31st, and of course, November 8th is the general election. I think I have one more slide. Let me see. It's about, okay. November 1st is also the deadline to request an absentee ballot. The nine drop boxes are gonna open from October 19th to November 8th. And the early voting can be at the two voter service centers, one in Hilo, one in Kona, October 25th to November 8th. And I think I just have maybe one more about tracking your ballot. You can actually go on ballot track and you can actually sign up for this. It'll tell you if your ballot has been accepted and then it'll actually tell you if, I mean, it was mailed and then it'll actually go to accepted. It's a really good tool to utilize to make sure that you are getting your ballot and your vote does count. Um, I think I just have just to go check vote411.org and I want to thank you. Any questions, you can actually call our voicemail or check our website. And thank you again, James, for inviting us to give you this information. Absolutely. Thank you, Rosemary. Uh, that's uh, really important information about the, um, the amendments there too. So we look forward to sharing that out as much as possible. So be that. Thank yeah, you. fantastic. Thank you. Um, I'm really grateful for you, Rosemary, and Illegal One Voters for your support and connecting with, assisting and engaging all of our voters in our different communities. So thank you for all the work that you do. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. So the next bit of uh, news we have here, uh, we have a number of uh, special events and uh, that as we approach the end of the year here, we're excited to share a number of events and opportunities for the community to connect 
And so, well, I, I hope you are ready to don your pink once again, because it's that time of year to raise awareness and show our support for breast cancer survivors. Uh, Tammy Muranaka is here with us this evening to highlight an upcoming event that all the community is invited to take a part in. So welcome, Tammy. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yes, my name is Tammy Marnaka. I am actually a three-time breast cancer survivor. Um, so October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And again, we're doing Pink It Up Waimea for the second year in a row. So we're, that day is going to be Tuesday, October 18th. And I want everyone to please join the movement and wear pink on that day because it shows our support for those people who are fighting something so difficult, which I know because I've been there. Um, anyway, so Mary Beth and Shelly and myself um, are going to be going around and dropping off um, community packs, which Mary Beth and Shelly made to be dropped off at businesses so they can participate on that day. Um, I'm also going to be sending a flyer to the library and they're going to be participating too. So I hope all of you will come and join us on that day and just so to show all your love and support for all breast cancer survivors. I'm just one vehicle trying to spread the message of hope because for me, pink is just not about breast cancer. It's about hope. It's about resilience. It's about just doing what we need to do to make this world better. And part of my job is I work at Wyoming Elementary as an education assistant and I work with um, special education students, but I also try to affect the lives of every single student to let them know there's hope in everything that you do. And there's no limits to what any one person can accomplish because this project has been a project of mine that has gone on for so many years. And I would like to take it even further and see how much we can um, spread the message to everyone, not just in Waimea, but everywhere. So thank you so much for listening to me. And I hope you guys um, participate in this. I would love to see all the pictures. Um, I, don't, I don't have my email up on the screen, but I do have an email for just specifically for any Pink It Up Day stuff. And it's called, it's pinkitup365 at gmail.com. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Mahalo. And we look forward to seeing everyone out there out that day wearing pink. So thanks so much for putting us on once again and raising that hope for everyone. So thank you so much, Tammy. Um, our next guest here, uh, as we get into the spirit of the fall season, um, uh, really is to, about supporting local and looking for ways to connect with the community. So towards the end of this month will be a special food truck event. And to share more on this, I'd like to welcome in Dana Wong, the owner of Naupaka Events. Welcome, Dana. Thank you so much, James, and thank you, Waimea Community Association, for giving us a quick spot. Um, but like James mentioned, our next Waimea Family Food Truck Friday is going to be Friday, October 28th at um, the wonderful WM Keck Observatory Headquarters parking lot. So that's located across the street from Queens North Hawaii Community Hospital. Um, we feature 10 to 13 different food truck vendors of all different um, backgrounds, as well as some amazing beverage vendors as well. Um, for this one, we're doing obviously a Halloween theme. So we'll have truck or treat where Keiki can dress up and go trick or treating at each of our vendors. We're also doing a pumpkin decorating contest where you can bring your already decorated um, pumpkins to get judged um, and win a prize. Um, and we also started doing a complimentary nonprofit feature um, for any sort of organization that is in line with what we do for the community. So this month we'll be featuring Kipu'u Pu'u Soccer Travel Team who will be fundraising for their travel expenses. So again, that's going to be Friday, October 28th from 4 to 8. And we look forward to seeing you all there. Fantastic. Thanks. Mahalo, Dana. Thank you for joining us this evening. We do look forward to doing some great food as always and getting together with all our friends and family at the food truck event. So thanks for sharing this and really pushing forward on this event. So thank you. 
All right. And as we continue in that spirit of the fall season, uh, next up, we have Chessy Nugent joined us here this evening to share about an eagerly awaited and spooky event for our Keiki and families this month. Welcome, Chessy. Hi. So as everyone know, we're, we're happy that we are finally getting back to hopefully normal, what normal would be for us. Um, so we, we're going to have on October 31st, we're going to have our spectacular, I guess, what I call Halloween safe, where we're gonna make, we're gonna basically shut down Kamaloa, the center road that sits in between our um, Lulai complex. So from Mamaloa from Mamaloa Highway to the connector road, with um, the inside of our whole complex will be shut off. So what they do know, and they'll be going out to more our homeowners, that um, we will start shutting down um, from 4:30. So our, hopefully our uh, homeowners will be in between 4.30 before we shut down. But we, you will start seeing the police and everyone coming in around about 4 a.m. Oh, not 4 a.m., but 4 p.m. And they won't more likely be leaving until about 8.30. But the event overall will be 5 to 8. What we're asking for is everyone that comes since we shut down this and you will not be allowed to enter a Mamalo Highway, we're asking one to park in the back connector road and park diagonally. We anticipate to have over 2,000 people come in and um, enjoy this event. We are lucky this year to have Parker School will be coming in and doing the what I call the help desk or the lost kid desk. They will also have a picture taking, um, I guess have a, I don't know what it will be called, like have a picture with a pumpkin. You use your um, smartphone and you can take a picture with um, the props that they have for the little kids. We also hope that we will be able to have a little glow sticks. So for the police and everyone, as it gets um, dark, we at least can see some of the smaller people as they're walking on our streets. Um, the last thing I think is Rotary this year will be helping us out a lot. They will have a their big um, pull van with it and they'll be distributing candy um, from that site. Uh, we are also in, if anyone would like to volunteer, they can contact me. Um, but otherwise right now, I think we're gonna be okay. For the person that was talking about pink, pink it up. If they'd like to come in um, for um, you know, all in pink, we're welcoming that aspect. This year we're trying to get exposure to all the different organizations that are nonprofit that are within our community. And if you came in pink, well, and believe it or not, the, bas the, the football teams and the baseball teams are gonna be from the rec center because they're basically, their practice will be, I guess, finished by 4.30. They'll be coming in that way too. But I, we're just thinking if you wanna do that, I think it would be, it'd give you a very good exposure because we get people from Honoka'a, Javi, and Waikoloa coming up here. Fantastic. Thank you, Thank you Chessine. It's great to have this event once again and look forward to having a safe evening with the, with the keiki there in the community. So it's really great to have a very safe contained space for all of our children. So thank you for putting on this event and really getting it started once again. Thank you. And of course, that mahalo to the Lua neighborhood for the work that they're doing to put on this event too. Uh, looking a little ahead, um, as we give thanks to those that support us in our community on a regular basis, I'd like to welcome back in our fellow board member, Nancy Carr Smith, to provide some information about an opportunity to give back and express the community's gratitude. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you, James. Yes, the board of directors of the Waimea Community Association are excited to announce that the meeting in November will be our sixth annual Mahalo to First Responders. This event was born years ago when we simply wanted to acknowledge those in our community who put themselves at risk to protect us. Of course, this includes our Waimea police officers, our fire stations, both <clears throat> county and volunteer, and our medical professionals. In the past, we've also recognized CERT volunteers, Hawaii life providers, and uh, doe care officers with DLNR. This year, we hope to include one more uh, group, and that's lifeguards. Uh, while we acknowledge that there are many other additional frontline workers in our communities that we love and appreciate, uh, we, we're just focusing on certain groups. 
As some of you may recall, the first several years that we created this Mahalo event, it was a big potluck paina and local groups would bring food items and we would hui together and mahalo and acknowledge those guests. The last two years with COVID, we've had to, a virtual meeting and yet the board was able to go and visit these heroes in their local environment, provide them mahalo gifts, take pictures, and then we came back together for a virtual meeting. We really liked that too, because we got to meet with these folks more one-on-one. -on -one. But we know it's time, it's time to come together in person and share a meal and share our appreciation to these groups. So we will meet in person in November. It'll be our first live meeting for about two and a half years. And it will be different than normal, a uh, different day of the week, a different time of the month. Um, it'll be on a Wednesday because we're hoping to uh, be able to have some of our friends that focus on the Thursday community meal, come and join us in the Mahalo. So mark your calendar, Wednesday, November 16th, between 5.30 and 7 at Kahilu Town Hall, across from Kahilu Theater, the home of Mana Christian Ohana. We're excited to have this venue. Due to COVID still lingering, we will not be um, accepting any potluck items. Instead, we are looking for monetary donations and the board will use the funds to support local restaurants and businesses to attain a meal for us all to share. Your donation check can be made out to Waimea Community Association with a Mahalo to First Responders note and mailed to the WCA at PO Box 2622 in Waimea. A donation can also be made on our website. There is a donation button there. Um, there is a fee involved, so we don't get the entire amount, but, but we, we realize that that's an easy way for people to donate. We can also accept cash and provide a receipt to any donors as requested. I'm happy to pick up donations from you folks. All you have to do is, is give me a call or shoot me a text or email and let me know if you would like to make a donation. We appreciate all of you and acknowledge that it takes a village to properly maintain respect, cooperation, integrity, and aloha in our community. And we strive to do just that with all of you. So mahalo for any donations that you would like to make so that we can make this event uh, as wonderful as possible. Thanks, James. Thank you, Nancy. You touched on everything there, so I won't belabor it too much, but it's a very important uh, event for us, for the community, to recognize our first responders. So thanks for all of your generosity and your support. And even looking a little further ahead, um, I wanted to, uh, let's see, I wanted to share some information. We wanted to share some information about the upcoming Waimea Christmas Parade. Uh, so to do this, I'd like to welcome in our fellow board member uh, and, and parade co-chair, Lon Yolson Chong to share some updates and exciting changes for this year's event. Welcome, Lonnie. Aloha. Thank you, James. The Waimeo uh, Twilight Christmas Parade is in its 62nd year. Being in an on-again, off-again state over the past couple of years, somehow I lost track of the correct year. I apologize <laughs> that our application indicates it's the 61st, but it is indeed our 62nd parade. I almost feel like I have been on this committee for more than 50 of those 62 parades actually in one way or another, but it's no wonder I lost track. Our 62nd parade will be exciting as we introduce a new parade route. The parade route this year will start at the Waimea Park, which makes the very first narrator station Parker School. From the park, we're gonna take a right onto Lindsay Road and then a left onto Mamalahoa Highway right onto Pukalani Road, then right again onto Ala Ohia Road with the parade disbanding at the Waimea District Park. Those of you who are in the habit of parking at Church Row or near the hospital or near Keck Observatory, please be warned that the parade will not pass in front of you in those areas. Please make note of the route change. We have graduated from 10 to 15 narrator stations this year with nine of them being on Pukalani and Ala Ohia roads, with the last narrator station sponsored by Parker Ranch located at the end of the route 
just before entering the district park. We ask your help in a few ways this year. As you set up your area or couple your space, please be considerate and respectful of others who's, uh, for their space and their belongings. Take the space you need, but leave space for others to park and set up to enjoy the parade. Pay attention to and respect the areas that we have marked off specifically for narrator stations and portable luas. Please bring a trash bag so you can leave the area around you better than when you found it. If you are one of those families that occupy your reserve space all day, please do not have any open fires. With our very dry surrounding areas, we ask your help in taking care of our aina around us. Thank you very much for your support of our 62nd Waimea Twilight Christmas Parade, where we will feature Kumu Ku Kahakalau as our Grand Marshal. With Ku's background in numerous programs benefiting our children, she was instrumental in selecting our theme for this year. He Kalikimaka Pooli Keiki, a children's Christmas cheer. We invite you all to join us as participants, sponsors, and spectators as we celebrate with a traditional parade this year. Application packets are available on our website, waimeatown.org. Any questions, give us a holler. Mahalo. Thank you, Lonnie. Uh, once again, that information about the parade, uh, the map we just showed, uh, ways to support also, um, and the forms needed to submit if you were interested in participating in the parade can be found up on the WCA website. So please find yourself there and you can find that information as well. Mahalo Lani, always appreciate what you're doing with the parade. Thank you. Um, also want to touch on a couple of last uh, ongoing and upcoming uh, events. Um, Typically, we have our community police officers on the call. Unfortunately, they're not able to join us this evening. Uh, they do intend to join us at the upcoming South Kuala Traffic Safety Committee meeting next week to provide uh, more community updates then. Um, uh, as part of this, uh, our community police officers have been tasked with managing and supporting the ongoing Ironman race, which is happening today. Um, today was that first day of the race and with the race carrying on for another day this Saturday. Uh, please plan accordingly and drive safely on our roads as you make your way around this weekend. Uh, road closures and timelines are much as they were, were today. This information has been posted up on Facebook pages and around, uh, news outlets and so forth, and will be made public and other, other venues on social media. Um, let's see, so we also have posted up on our Facebook page about an event that many community members are, are excited about uh, and returning as well. I'll just share this on the screen here. Uh, Waikiki Polo and the polo season has returned again. And this Sunday kicks off uh, the polo season. And the Waikiki Polo Club uh, invites you to attend and support their partner organizations. And more information can be found on their website at waikiipolo.com. Hmm. Uh, next up, we have, let's see if I got this one here as well. Uh, next week also kicks off Hawk Week uh, to raise awareness about the threats to our native species. Um, more of this information can be found on, I think I have one more slide for this possibly, um, up on birdfesthawaii.org. Uh, basically, there are um, virtual events happening every day that week to learn about the EO and impacts of the EO and environmental hazards and so forth. So very interesting event going on there next week. Just wanna share a quick update on those. So these events uh, and others are, we do our best to try and post them up on our Facebook page, ones that are recurring regularly or right around the corner, but really wanted to point a couple of these out to you. And as always, if you or an organization that you're affiliated with need help in spreading word, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, and as always, you know, we're still in this transition time, so please remain thoughtful and diligent uh, as we continue to uh, see COVID-19 and see it as our coolion in the community. So please stay home if you're feeling under the weather, wear masks when and where appropriate, uh, get tested if you suspect exposure and consider getting vaccinated if you had any chance. Um, the new bivalent boosters are now available to help protect against subvariants. And this may be something to consider as we look ahead to the holiday season when we're gathering more uh, together and people are returning to the islands and families getting together. And as always, if you have questions, uh, we encourage you to visit hawaiicovid19.com, which is the state COVID-19 portal, or hawaiicounty.gov slash coronavirus, which is the county COVID portal. 
All right. Uh, moving into the last portions of our meeting here uh, for the month of October, uh, the Waimea Community Association will be spotlighting the Hawaii Wildfire Management Organization as our nonprofit of the month. With the largest fire in our state's history occurring here in our community and impacting surrounding communities last year, along with a constant and growing risk of fire, uh, we must learn how we can best prepare our families and homes for this threat. And so tonight we're joined by Nani Barreto, who is a co-executive director of Hawaii Wildfire Management Organization to really share about the organization's goals, their ongoing programs and resources that are available to our residents. Welcome Nani, thanks for joining us once again. Thank you, James. Can you hear me okay? Yes, loud and clear. Okay, I'm going to share my slide deck here. And you can see my slides? Uh, not quite yet, actually. What can you see? It still says it's loading here. Oh, gotcha. That's unfortunate. We had it working earlier. Sorry, everyone. Let me try that again. There we go. Now. Yep, all good. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for the invitation to present and uh, for spotlighting our nonprofit this month. Um, we do serve statewide, but we're located right here in Waimea. So it's always nice and comforting to present to people that probably already know about us and maybe even our work. Um, so I am Nani Barreto and I am with Hawaii Wildfire Management Organization. And we are a nonprofit and have been around for about two decades now. We work in tight partnership with our agency partners, our community partners on anything and everything related to wildfire awareness and wildfire preparedness. Um, and we do this very collaboratively and proactively through a lot of different planning, education, and mitigation projects. Our website, it's um, worth checking out. It's yewildfire.org. It serves as our one-stop shop for any wildfire-related information and resources you may need. So please feel free, check it out, make use of what is there. We have lots of informational resources for the general public, including fire preparedness materials and recordings from past webinars. We have lots of maps that show our wildfire ignitions, our communities at risk for wildfire. We also have our community wildfire protection plans. Uh, those are the documents that really help us and our communities stay eligible for federal funds. Um, we also host the statewide public information campaign every year on behalf of our agency partners. It's called the Wildfire and Drought Lookout. You might see that around um, and on the radio and um, throughout other materials. Um, we have our Ready, Set, Go handbooks that you may see around. Uh, we have materials for professionals like our large landowners, land managers, planners, teachers, and of course, we have our cakey materials um, focused on, you know, preparing our next gen for what it means to live with wildfire. But for today's presentation, I really want to highlight one of our flagship projects that might be of interest to some of those on the call. It's called FireWise, and it's the program we offer to residents that are really interested in taking action at that local level. We run this program in partnership with our State Division of Forestry and Wildlife. It's a national program. It was launched in 2002 by the National Fire Protection Association. Um, these are the same folks that develop and issues of the fire code, so you may be familiar with that name. The program itself, it provides a collaborative framework to help neighbors in a very geographic area get organized, find direction, and really take action to increase the ignition, ignition resistance of their homes, their communities, and to reduce wildfire risk at that local level. Residents that participate report lots of various benefits to being part of a FireWise effort. They like that it allows residents themselves to create the framework for action. They learn more about fire. They earn a peace of mind knowing that they're doing something to protect their home and their community ahead of time. And it's a very community building program where they get to know their neighbors, they work with their neighbors. Um, and plus you get recognition, not just at the national level, but at the local level with our county and our state fire agencies. And it can open doors to funding opportunities. So right now there's more than 2,100 different FireWise sites across the country and their website is firewise.org if you want to learn more. 
And then in Hawaii, we have 15 FireWise communities. Um, they are scattered across four islands. You can see on the map on the left. Um, this infographic is our snapshot of what our program looked like last year in 2021. Um, so each community has two to three leaders that really take the lead on FireWise in their communities. And so overall, we have 66 community leaders that are leading their communities across our state. Um, with 15 communities on the map, that's about 70,000 residents and a total of uh, 5,000 structures that have the potential to be pe better protected because of communities taking action. Last year alone, our communities collectively reduced their fire risk by removing more than 2,000 cubic yards of hazardous fuels. Um, and they spent more than 11,000 hours of their own time taking other risk reduction actions, um, including mobilizing, building those communities around fire action. If you translate that many hours, plus the amount of time they spend hardening their homes and preparing their landscapes, Combined, they invested more than $850,000 in their community's wildfire preparedness efforts. So again, these are communities that are deeply involved, deeply engaged in the conversations around community resilience, wildfire preparedness. And for us, they really are our community champions, our ambassadors. We like to call them our spark club plugs. Um, they are our advocates for this place and our natural resources. Um, and, you know, they're out there advocating for a future for all of us where we are prepared, we are ready to live in partnership with a landscape that tends to be prone to fire and even other natural disasters. So thinking about Waimea in particular, um, here in Waimea and the surrounding areas, we have five of these nationally recognized communities. Um, again, these are our neighbors that are already recognizing their fire risks and they're doing something on the daily to reduce those risks. So here we have uh, Pu'ukapu, Waikiki Ranch, Pu'uanahulu, Waikoloa Village, and the Kanehoa Subdivision. So if anyone here tonight lives in one of those communities and does not yet know that you're part of this growing movement, reach out. I'm happy to connect you to your FireWise leaders. Um, we also have two new communities that are in the very early stages of this application process, and those are Anikona subdivision and Kamuela View Estates. And I know both of those communities are looking for neighbors to help them in that application process and spearhead projects with them. So again, feel free, reach out, I can connect you to them. For those that are not already part of a FireWise community, um, here's what it takes to become one and to stay one, like our friends and neighbors. So first you have to organize yourselves. You have to create a board or a committee of volunteers to represent your community. You identify a resident leader or maybe two or three to be the main point of contact. And then you define the boundaries and the number of residences and homes within those boundaries. Second, you plan it. The board collaborates with us at Hawaii Wildfire to complete a community wildfire risk assessment. Um, we like to update those every five years and they also create an action plan that they use to guide their work um, in the next three years. And then the third step really is all about the action, um, doing some sort of educational or risk reduction action, either individually or as a community. Um, each FireWise site is required to invest at least one hour per household per year to maintain their national FireWise recognition. And then the fourth step is once all of that criteria has been met, uh, the resident leaders get together and complete and submit their uh, application on the web-based portal. And once it's approved by our national partner, NFPA, they send a plaque um, to the community that can uh, that they can kind of install along the roadsides. And then once the community becomes nationally recognized, they officially and kind of by default become part of our Hawaii FireWise network. Um, this program has been growing in size over the past few years. And so we at Hawaii Wildfire have put into place activities and different approaches that can really support and assist our FireWise communities, um, both the existing ones and the new ones. So we help coordinate the hazard assessments. We assist with the applications. We host uh, quarterly gatherings where all of the residential leaders across the state can come together to learn and share and connect. Uh, we provide program updates and share resources, um, and we're always checking in with our with our folks and making sure their needs are being met, 
um, on a pretty regular basis. And then we connect them to our uh, national, state, county, and other local efforts. And when funding is available, which has been quite frequently lately, we are able to offer workshops and trainings. We're able to facilitate learning groups around uh, specific areas of interest. And we offer financial assistance or reimbursements for community mitigation efforts. Um, lastly, I want to put a plug in for our upcoming three day training where we are training community members on how to perform home assessments for residents living in their Firewise community. And then we also have funds that will support them to go out and complete the home assessment. So at that time, we'll be offering free home assessments to anyone in a Firewise community that signs up for one. Um, if you want more information um, or if you're interested in signing up, feel free to go to our website or you can scan the QR code on the screen. I'll also put the link to the webpage in the chat box um, and with that, I want to thank you deeply again for highlighting our nonprofit this month. We really are honored to be engaging meaningfully in this way with our communities, um, the ones that we serve. So please reach out if you have any haves or needs for resources, and we can work together on that front. Um, thank you, and have a great evening. Mahalo Nui Nani. Thank you so much for joining us here this evening and uh, speaking on behalf of the Wildfire Management Organization. It's really great to be, have you here. Uh, part of this talking about this, especially as we look ahead to our November meeting, you know, sharing our gratitude for our first responders. So really wanted to tie those in and really keep our keep our minds thinking about those sort of things. So thank you for the work that you're doing and connect with our communities and uh, sharing these initiatives to, to really change our mindset and really protect our homes and our communities altogether. So thank you so much. And once again, if you're interested in learning more about Hawaii Wildfire Management Organization, uh, please go to hawaiiwildflower.org. Uh, That's the place you need to go. I did post it in the Facebook chat. So uh, please visit them when you have a chance to learn more and support them in any way you can. Thanks again, Nani. Good to have you on here. All right. And I'm really grateful for his patience and for our final portion for tonight's agenda. We felt it timely to reconnect with our county mass transit uh, agency. It has been some time since we last visited on this topic uh, when we heard presentations and an opportunity to comment on the uh, transit and multimodal transportation master plan. So it's been quite a few years now, uh, but there has been some activity since then and we're now able to benefit from, and we're grateful to be joined by uh, John Ando, our mass transit administrator and general manager. Welcome Administrator Ando, thanks for joining us here. Thank you for having me. Top of the evening, everybody. Thank Happy you. to talk public transit with everybody tonight. Perfect. Particularly in the Waimea area. <clears throat> So we've uh, made some great strides in making the bus getting uh, making the bus better in Hawaii County. And it all started with this document that's in front of you, the Transit and Multimodal Transportation Master Plan. Uh, it was completed in August of 2018, and it's being updated and finalized as we speak. The goal is to link public transit to multimodal transportation, rebuild the Helion system, ensure a financially sustainable path, promote economic development, expand routes and services, and uh, implement uh, new modes to move people around the island. Uh, this gives you a perspective of the Helion family of services. Uh, for those that are not familiar with Helion, uh, Helion is the public transit system for Hawaii Island. And we are operating multimodal opportunities island-wide. That starts with our fixed routes that travels across the islands within Waimea and to Hilo, Kailua, Kona, basically uh, all over the island. We have a paratransit program for persons that have disabilities that cannot ride traditional fixed route transit or get to a fixed route transit bus stop. We have the high bike bike share system in Hilo and Kailua, Kona. If you wanted to ride a bike um, in those downtown areas. Flex route services where we bring the bus to you. Waimea particularly has a flex route that operates seven days a week. We have the van pool program to connect commuters from home to their jobs. We subsidize those vans at $500 per month. Uh, the uh, HDOT has a carpooling database where you can uh, find other people who are traveling to similar destinations and you can share the ride. We have a shared ride program where we subsidize taxi trips and sued Uber. Um, and right now that primarily operates in the Hilo area. 
Once Uber comes online, that program will now be available island-wide, and we would subsidize trips up to $12 uh, per trip. We're starting microtransit services in our largest subdivisions on the island that will start uh, later on in the year. Uh, those services would be door-to-door, -door, primarily in the Kau and uh, Puda districts. And then lastly, in partnership with the Hawaii County Economic Opportunities Council, we operate a door-to-door -door rural service uh, where uh, for those that cannot get to traditional Helion services, this door-to-door -door service will pick you up and take you where you want to go to connect to quality of life opportunities. So the bus and the bike is free. Uh, thanks to a grant from the Federal Transit Administration requiring no local uh, county match funds to pay for it, uh, we are, we, uh, with the uh, support from County Council, the mayor has made Helion buses, paratransit, and high bike free. So all you just need to do is hop on the bus, take a seat, and we'll take you to where you need to go. This recreates a program in the past from 2005 to 2013. Uh, when the system was free, ridership was close to 1.2 million passenger trips a year. The goal is to connect people to opportunity address social equity, and remove the barriers of the cost of transportation. This particularly helps low-income residents uh, be able to now redirect the monies that was previously being used to ride the bus to other quality of life needs, such as grocery shopping uh, um, and household uh, goods. If you uh, ride Helion, you can ask the bus driver for a code to ride high bike for free. And high bike provides that first and last mile connection. So if you come off the bus and you still need to get somewhere where the bus doesn't go, you can check out a bike, 30 minute unlimited rides in Hilo or in Kailua Kona and get to your ultimate destination and, and do the same in reverse. And we're actually seeing ridership grow as a result. This gives you a perspective of how our passenger trips were from 2014 to present. And as you can see, with the change in services that we've done going uh, fare free, we're starting to see ridership go back up again, which is our ultimate goal to demonstrate that the transit system is working for our island. We're reinventing public transit on this island. This is the new brand that you'll start to see on buses later on in the fall. Uh, we're working with our new decaling company to basically wrap every Helion bus in the fleet, so it basically has one consistent design, focuses on the island flower, the lehua, and our island color, uh, which is red to sim symbolize uh, the lava from the volcanoes. We also have a new logo that you'll state at the bottom of this slide uh, that we're starting to promote on all of our services. Um, we also are sub-branding our various services, such as the Paratransit is Heliod Kako'o. The Vanpool program is Heliod Hoaholo. And we're about to uh, rebrand the door-to-door uh, -door rural services. This is the new network. 24 routes connecting people across the island and between communities. Service rolls 23 hours a day, 3.15 in the morning to 2.15 at night. Um, every community on the island now has a bus seven days a week. Door-to-door -door flex services are available on five routes. You can see those yellow um, areas on this map to give you an idea on what the flex route is. A flex route will basically follow a bus route, but if you ask the driver or call at least one hour in advance, the bus will go off route up to one mile to pick up that person at their um, pickup point and then drop them off at their destination point. And as I mentioned, Waimea does have one of those flex route services, uh, Route 301. We have park and ride lot opportunities across the island. And because of this new network that we implemented last September, we're connecting more people to employment, schools, parks, recreation, shopping, and airports. Particularly in the Waimea area, we have the Routes 301. We have the 76 Green Line from Honoka'a, Waimea, to Waikoloa Village and ultimately to Kailua Kona. We uh, also have the Route 75 from Havi uh, down to Kwai Hai through Waimea also to Kailua Kona. We have the Route 80 that comes from Hilo through Waimea to the South Kahala Resorts to Kailua Kona. 
And then we have the Route 60 that goes from Hilo uh, along the Hamakua coast to Waimea, and it ends there. And then lastly, we have the Route 1 that goes from Hilo along the Hamakua coast through Waimea, down um, Highway 190, ultimately ending in Kailua Kona. So multiple ways to get uh, to various destinations uh, from Waimea. If you have a disability and you can't ride traditional fixed route transit, Helion Kako'o is that service for you. Um, it primarily operates in areas where we have frequent uh, bus service. So that's primarily in Kailua Kona, Hilo, and in the Puna district. In the case of Waimea, that's why we have the flex service uh, so that we can meet the requirements of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Uh, we use minivans for our paratransit program. Um, that service is subcontracted out. Uh, presently, was it was previously TransDev. It's now uh, Roberts Hawaii on an emergency procurement. Uh, we are evaluating a vendor to do the long-term service, and they'll also perform in-person eligibility assessments, and uh, we'll be incorporating more technology into the paratransit fleet. Flex route, as I mentioned, we bring the bus to you. It's free to all. We use smaller vehicles for flexibility. Routes 12, 60, 75, 301, and 403 uh, provide those flex route services across the island. This is the Route 301 in the Waimea area, uh, basically going from Quamela View Estates to uh, Lakeland uh, through Waimea Town. And that gray area is the buffer to show that one mile radius that the bus uh, will travel to. Uh, we're also about to extend the service uh, uh, three times a day from Cobella View Estates to this neighborhood over here, primarily to uh, help connect uh, seniors to shopping and children to access Waimea Elementary School, HPA, and uh, Parker School. And then along the uh, Javi, uh, between Javi and Kwaihai, Route 75 provides that flex route service for those residents. And then Route 60 from Hilo to Waimea along the Habakua Coast also provides uh, that um, flex route service. As I mentioned, we have the door-to-door -door service with Hawaii County Economic Opportunities Council. The service operates Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 4.30, excluding holidays. It is free, it operates by district, and um, it's primarily a rural service for people that live away from Helion service that need to access quality of life opportunities. So for those that are in the rural areas of Waimea, if you're looking for transportation, this service could be for you, and you can register directly with Hawaii County Economic Opportunities Council. And this is the district maps of where we have the various uh, vans operating for our rural program. In the Hilo area, we have the Shared Ride Taxi Program. Uh, we will subsidize trips up to nine miles by ordering or by purchasing coupon books from the Mass Transit Agency. Uh, we have ADA Accessibility Service with the taxi program. Three cabs in the Hilo area provides this service. And uh, we're about to include Uber, which will help us expand this program island-wide which takes us to uh, the Uber portion of the shared ride program. We'll be subsidizing up to $12 per ride, basically use the Uber platform in order to uh, get the access to the transportation. Um, um, and then if you are ADA accessible and you need to access a uh, shared ride, we would have the taxis to provide that supplemental service. Um, and if you're unbanked, you'll be able to use the Visa. You could use Visa, MasterCard, or American Express gift cards, or you could use an Uber gift card. So that means uh, everyone has access to this program, whether they're banked or unbanked. If you want to share the ride with a, with a friend or with, a, with people going to the similar destination, the high ride share program through uh, HDOT is available to you. Um, basically, you can register on this database, and this database would basically match you with other people that would connect you to um, destinations that you may want to travel. Um, and the website address is on this slide if you would like to take advantage of the high rideshare system. 
And um, it's a great way to uh, meet new people as you travel to work or to community events. The Heliod Hoa Holo is our band pool program that just started. Uh, we contract with Commute with Enterprise to provide this service. Uh, we have 30 bands that have been budgeted. Right now we have 17 bands on the road as of August, and this program just started in May. And the goal is to help connect people from home to work in a way where you can control your schedule versus having the bus control your schedule. We have vans that are ADA accessible. We have emergency ride home programs, ride matching, marketing, outreach, and uh, Commute with Enterprise will provide the van with the Heliod Hola, Hoa Holo logo on them. As I mentioned, uh, we have the high bike program and there are stations in Hilo and Kailua Kona. Uh, we're about to expand the program utilizing a TAP grant, uh, Transportation Alternative Programs Grant from HDOT. Um, if you ride the Heliod system, high bike is free. You can just get the code from the bus operator and input that into the app. We contract this program to PATH, which is a nonprofit entity that's um, responsible for promoting active transportation and subcontract out that service to secure bike share. 23,466 trips were made on high bike last fiscal year. And when, since J uh, January of, last, of this year, 41 codes from Heliod have been redeemed. You notice that we have a lot of old buses in the Heliod system. Many of them have been donated to us by the city and county of Honolulu or county of Maui. Uh, we're in the process of actively replacing the entire transit fleet. Our average bus is 18 years old. We have grant funds to replace the fleet and we're going through procurement processes to do so. Um, ultimately, we'll have a fleet of 55 buses where we utilize 40 of those in a peak operation. And then uh, that will result in 47 large buses, 15 small buses uh, for a fleet size of 62. Uh, we are also going zero emissions and we have three hydrogen buses um, that will be incorporated into the fleet. One of them is on island now and will operate primarily in Kailua Kona. Uh, we're in the process of purchasing battery electric buses. Ultimately, we'll have 18 of those, and those will primarily operate in the Hilo area. Uh, we recently received a grant to get six hydrogen buses, so that will allow us to expand our hydrogen fleet and start testing hydrogen um, in um, along uh, like the South Kohala coast and on longer distance routes. Uh, we are going to be... Um, basically ultimately replacing our entire fleet by 2025. And then starting in 2032, um, after the current fleet that we're about to buy reaches its useful life, we'll start purchasing zero emissions with the goal of uh, having complete zero emission buses, battery electric or hydrogen uh, by 2035. We're starting to actively promote the Helion system. Uh, as I mentioned, we have a new logo. We're actively on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, we're redesigning our website to make it easier to use, advertising in magazines, uh, sending press releases to promote our services and our achievements, and uh, uh, making community presentations such as the one that I'm doing today. This gives you a perspective of what the new Helion website will look like once it's done. Much easier to navigate and find information incorporates a trip planner so you can put where you are, where you want to go, and it'll actually tell you the routes that you can take uh, to get to your destination. We're also on Google Maps, Apple Maps, Bing Maps as well. If you want to track your bus, we have uh, myhelionbus.org uh, through GMV, and you'll be able, to, as we start to add trackers on all of our routes, you'll be able to see in real time where your bus is so that you can get a perspective on if it's running on time or if it's uh, and when you should be at the bus stop. Passenger amenities are very important. We're actively um, working on adding more bus shelters, uh, particularly in the Waimea area. We're looking at adding one in front of the hospital, replacing the one that uh, gotten damaged. And, uh, and uh, actually, I think there's two in Waimea that has been damaged. So we're um, actively looking to replace those, working uh, with a consultant team who is inventorying all of our bus stops and helping us with the engineering 
efforts and the permitting process so that we can get more bus shelters and formal bus stops with signs island-wide and ensure that our bus stops meet the Americans with Disabilities Act. Uh, we are proposing 41 bus shelters uh, this fiscal year. Uh, of the 41, eight of those will require reconstruction. So this I, it might be difficult to see, but this is the list of the proposed shelters that we're going to be adding, particularly in the Waimea area, uh, one by the hospital and Ace Hardware, uh, rebuilding the one at Mud Lane in Lakeland area, and then installing one in the Kwai Hai area. Apps are important uh, for those that enjoy uh, using technology. Uh, we are in Transit app and Move It app, and they are called Mobility as a Service. So with that, you can plan your bus trips, schedule Uber rides, unlike, unlock high bike bicycles. Uh, should we resume collecting fares, you can pay your fares on these apps. And uh, we'll be integrating our microtransit service for making reservations uh, for that door-to-door -door service into this app. And you'll be able to track in real time where our buses are through our new uh, service with GMV. And then we'll be having a application for paratransit riders who want to schedule, cancel paratransit rides on a separate app. So that concludes my presentation. Happy to answer any questions. My contact information is also here on this slide. And I would like to thank you for allowing me to uh, chat with you. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Ando. That, that was a um, quite amazing presentation, very comprehensive and a lot of wonderful information there. We're grateful for you, the work that you're doing uh, to really address community uh, needs and really to listen to the community in those fashions. So thank you so much for, for all the work that you're doing to move our mass transit agency forward. So thank you. Of course. Um, you, you've probably answered many of our questions already that we had on, on online, but I'd like to pass it over to uh, Nancy Carr-Smith to see if she had any questions uh, that we could share with you here. Yes, thank you so much. That was very impressive. And um, it sounds like our, our county is in better shape than I thought we were <laughs> with uh, Mass Transit. So that's wonderful. Um, the Waimea community really appreciates the, the flex route um, that is available to people here. And you did mention that there are plans for it to expand and you pointed on the map um, where you pointed that just took it right down to Kanehoa, um, maybe on a Kona area. Um, is, there, is there any chance that we can get it uh, further Makai um, down into the Ouli subdivision area or what's so the, the buffer for the one mile will extend as a result to cover this area. Uh -huh. uh, can you advise to me where the subdivision you're talking about is? Um, it's just Mackay off the map. So is that over here? It's further down right there. Yeah. It's the next area mm. below <sighs> what you have on the map. We'll have to evaluate to see if we can get that far. Doing this alone allows the bus to operate hourly and taking it this far kind of affects the frequency of the bus operating hourly. So it might have to be a different type of service or our door-to-door -door rural service that can provide this. The goal of the master plan was to provide consistent service following the same path um, on a more frequent basis so people have something to rely on. And we have to just be mindful as we start extending routes, it can affect that frequency. Sure, that's understood. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll ask another one here and then pass it to Lonnie if she's there. I can't see her, so I don't know. Um, so you talked about the replacement bus stops. That's great, thank you. Um, you talked about the, the current fleet. Um, what about the um, the free rideshare program? What where do you see that going? Is do you do you know how long that will last? Uh, right now, through December thirty first of twenty twenty five. Really, that long? Yep. Okay. Awesome. That's wonderful. 
basically the grant is covering five hundred and sixty thousand dollars of fares that previously would have been collected. Um, so uh, we the grant funds we got is is enough to cover about five hundred and sixty thousand from now through um, twenty twenty five. Okay, James is Lonnie there? I can't see her. She did kind of step away, but she is here okay. if she wants to jump in. Yeah. Yeah, Aloha, John. I was just wondering, and thank you. That information is awesome. But just regarding to the courtesy between your drivers and other, you know, people that they pass on the community as they're driving, stopping and going, is there any information you want to share with us on their reactions or how they're being accepted or treated along the routes? You know, uh, it's been fairly, um, there hasn't been any like concerns or any like issues, uh, particularly in the Waimea community. Um, there was uh, one concern about the size of buses um, down in this area here. Uh, and that was as a result of, right, because of our fleet challenges, we are forced with having to put various bus types on this route until we can uh, replace some of these older buses with more reliable new buses. So. That, that was really the only concern that was brought to my attention. Um, I believe it's been mitigated. But beyond that, there hasn't really been any other issues. Uh, but people are, are grateful that this service exists. Oh, they are indeed. They are very grateful indeed. I can see that. And I got to say that the buses I follow or come upon, the drivers are very courteous. We always make a shocker every time we pass. <laughs> nice. But especially in the Homestead subdivision, they are very uh, good about obeying the speed limit within the subdivision. So really happy about that. Thank you. Uh, of course. Might I Patty, jump in? Yep. Jane, some Patty, go ahead. Yeah. Hi there, um, uh, Mr. Ando. I understood, I think there was a confusion a minute ago. Um, it's not the flex routes. It's, I believe the Waimea circular, circulator actually possibly being extended down to Ouli subdivision, which is further Makai of what you were pointing to. Yeah, the Waimea Circulator is this route here on display, the Route 301, which oh, is a flex is, route. Oh, it is a flex route. Yeah. We had understood that there might be a possibility of actually going down to the Ouli subdivision um, and that that had been in, under discussion. So that's, I, I know uh, we've been working with the council member, uh, Tim yes. Richards, on yes. taking it to this neighborhood right here where my arrow is. Um, your your map doesn't show now. Oh, it doesn't show? I'm yeah. Sorry. Where my arrow is? Where your arrow is, okay. Yeah, <clears throat> that's, I think that's Kanihoa. We were hoping- yeah, so We've down. been working with the council member to get this far, which would expand the buffer. So we're looking at three trips to this neighborhood here. And primarily was there's some seniors out here as well as students that were trying to access Waimea Elementary. And middle school, both. Um, okay, so we'll check in. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken there, Patty, that is Ouli Street, uh, oh, what Mr. Andrew is pointing to there. And then I think because of the buffer, it could reach um, that north, that most eastern side of Kanehoa Street. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it'll be a one mile radius from this uh, this point here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We we would really love to have that additional service down to Ouli Subdivision. There's a lot of children there mm -hmm. for elementary and middle school, and families with only one car. Transportation's a real a real barrier. Yes. So that starts October 23rd. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Jane. Thank you, Patty. Yeah, Nancy, did you have any other questions or Lonnie? No, thank you. Yeah, I mean, John, uh, Mr. Ando, you were <laughs> very comprehensive and touching all these points and it was really good to have you uh, as part of this conversation and really update the community on all the work that you're doing with mass transit and pushing that program forward and all these initiatives um amazing work that you're doing there so thank you for all that you've done and are continuing to do absolutely glad to be of service thank you and mr ando does join the south park traffic safety committee from time to time a pretty regular attendee um and if you have questions specifically about uh, mass transit you're welcome to join those meetings and speak with mr ando uh to that front as well so 
want to thank um, Mr. Ando for joining us. Uh, thank our board members for being a part of this conversation as well. Uh, grateful for the, the questions and the time spent here talking about our mass transit programs and the work that we're doing to uh, create transportation equity for our communities. So thank you so much, Mr. Ando. No, no, no problem. And I want to thank uh, you guys for take, for supporting this system and also our council and our mayor for being actively engaged with the Mass Transit Agency. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, and before we close tonight's meeting, as we're reaching that time here, we've gone a little past seven, but I thank everyone for being on the call and watching this recording uh, later on. Uh, I'd like to say just a couple words. First of all, mahalo nui to all of our presenters for joining us tonight for taking the time to update our viewers and create those opportunities for our community to engage at all different levels. Uh, there are definitely many exciting events to look forward to in the months ahead. Uh, and encourage you to get out there and, and get involved and be engaged. And we're grateful uh, to share those events here with you tonight. Thank you all to all of our viewers, of course, for joining us on the live stream. And as always, you're welcome to revisit and rewatch this recording up on the WCA Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. And on behalf of the Waimea Community Association Board, I want to wish everyone good health, be well, aloha.